stay home. Jing, jing, jing. Inshallah and the shay. Blessings to you, my energetic beings. Today's a day about creating a spiritual acumen. It's like, what is our spiritual habit or ritual that we can commit to to really enhance our day-to-day -day life, our enhancement? So have you received the memo on your spiritual karma? Just placing all of our thoughts, those worrisome or doubting things on the altar in the realm of the ancestor, the great spirit. So our sensors are placing peace out into our future. So with that, welcome to today's Daily Snippet. Once again, I am your host. I'm a practicing holistic shamedium, subtle energetic surgeon. My thing is to merge these indigenous technologies, the spirit of the Dagara tribe in Burkina Faso, with the subtle energies, the elements, the elemental beings, and taking that from the elemental realm into the imaginal realm with offerings, rituals, prescriptions, really to add to your personal ingredients in your container. But my intention truly is to merge these indigenous technologies with the subtle realms, the etheric highway, basically the other world into this world, to assist you into navigating your prime directive, your inner genius, just really reintroducing you to the magical being that resides within you. My name is Tanya D, and welcome to my virtual medicine room. Ashe. Um, and one other thing, if you haven't already, please be kind and do subscribe to my YouTube channel, Tanya D, uh, Musing with Tanya D, my podcast, and really hit the bell so you're notified. And also, if you don't mind, liking my video, sharing, and commenting so the YouTube algorithm really echoes me out to suggest me to other like-minded musers into the galactic universe, along with other social channels like Instagram, TikTok, and all the others, but... Um, Next week's podcast, I'm going to be musing about our ancestors, just really opening the door to some otherworldly insight into the realm of our ancestors. The elemental cosmology, and being that we are in a season of fire in the Dagara cosmology, it's like going back to our origin, the voices of our origin. And with the moon in Taurus today, connecting with Uranus, it's kind of innovating how we feel, kind of depending on the house that she is transiting. It's like grounding our emotions Taurus is the earth, right? What we value, what we put value on, how we are valued, worthy, the moon, our emotions, how we emote. Just understanding our moon is kind of an aspect to heal our body, our feelings. It's a thing truly to validate them, validating what we feel and do you trust that feeling and do you sense it or what do you sense and can you feel it? And also vice versa, like trusting the feeling, sensing the feeling, feeling the feeling, etc. So our emotions are an in-body embodiment. So emotions need to flow like waters, like streams, the rivers, the highways, the cosmic highway, and otherwise. And a dammed up emotion is a dammed up spirit or a clogged soul. And the body's going to show us where because it speaks a language of its own. Um, but the messages from the galactic universe today, our first runner up, if you will, is um, the giveaway. It's the present moment. It's the product of events that have their origin in the past. So just like the fruit is a product of the seed that grew into a tree. So when we understand the causes, the forces, beliefs, and even people, situations, and events that um, define our current or present situation, we then can set these energies free. And when we become conscious in the moment, we actually begin to break free of the karma, the unconscious tendencies from the past. And just remember, karma can be good, it can be bad, and it can be indifferent or a zone of neutrality, um, balance. So there's no need to be seduced by it, if you will. But the messages from the ancestors, the self, the wound that we no longer need to be defined by, the giveaway, the message of the giveaway. So last week I actually had the message for the giveaway for a muser. The giveaway is the gift that we offer to life, our journey on the earth plane. And we do this without attachment, without expecting anything back. It's just natural. It's like being in a constant state of just gratitude where we can give what is truly ours to give, whether it's a free musing show, a smile, a gentle touch, a kind word or assistance in any form. So it's not giving to others what we no longer want. It's an aspect, it's the sharing and the caring. So it's coming from our authentic space, our authenticity of our feelings and also our heart and our love space. So if you can allow yourself truly 
to create a list, whether it's three to 10 things, can be people, just aspects that you're truly authentically grateful for and really connect with that feeling, a feeling of gratitude. That's kind of what this card is coming to ask us to really feel that same gratitude without needing anything or anyone to inspire it, to just share our gifts of gratitude with those that we meet along our journey on the earth plane in the earth school. I would say do an offering of thanks, an offering of our own heart as it opens up and then having this realization or reflection of how much we literally have also already been given so we can heal our feelings, the feelings of scarcity, betrayal or whatever, quite frankly, as we open ourselves to the abundance that we already have around us. So we're being invited to be in the flow of life, releasing this dam, giving freely and also receiving freely. So the wound of not being able to give freely is released, the attachment to the giveaway, release and just allow peace to be the river that streams, if that makes sense. The peace, peace is water, it's the flow in the Dagara cosmology. So it's like finding that reconciliation, finding our clarity and finding our inner peace. And then the message from the West comes from the lower world, if you will. So this is the memo that we receive to allow for the old story to flow downstream so the new story can flow in. So the lower world holds the hidden treasures of humanity. It's this place of rich, fruitful darkness where we can find the disowned parts of ourselves or the parts that we have in shadow, those abandoned aspects of our psyches. The lower world is the place of our ancestors where we really discover our gifts and the lessons from the past. It's the realm of the collective unconsciousness. So here is where we can meet our demons, if you will, our shadows, and transform them into pure, authentic energy, our source of personal power, our allies, if you will. So the question is, are you one of those people who do not like to face your past? Or, you know, the past right now is calling us to be acknowledged, to be heard, to embraced, and the only way to become unstuck is to honor everything that really has transpired in our life and reflect on the lessons that we've learned and moving on, where we can actually bear witness to our past, learn its lessons, and then they stop haunting us. So it's a message that we can embrace our gifts, and in doing so, we recover a missing part of our soul, um, an aspect. So it's like getting the memo. It's like how many times do we have to have the broken record, the vinyl one, <laughs> the vinyl broken record. I have some. Just start cleaning out the garage. And then from the north, we got the juiciness of wisdom. The wisdom received from the giveaway in the lower world. We have the moon, the majesty of the moon. And who doesn't love by the moon or at least live by the moon anyways? To me, she really is the queen. The fall of joy. I have a Scorpio moon, so it's in fall in the season of Scorpio. The moon is. And it's also in its joy in the third house, the moon. So... I coined it the fall of joy or the joy of the fall, I guess. Either way, it's all perspective. But the moon, the queen of the ebbs and the flows and coming from the light to the darkness, the darkness to the light, she's flowing. And then she goes and she does it all over again through the waxing, the fullness, the wanting to the return of the birthing to the new moon. Be sure to check out my musing moon meditations. They are so fun, I must say. I love doing them. Um, but through the periods of darkness and the emptiness that sometimes we can feel in the moon and the stillness, there's this light waiting to be reborn into this new phase, maybe a new phase of our life. And we're being renewed just like the moon through those phases. And being that she has such a strong influence again on the waters, the ebb and the flow, the same power really affects our human feelings and our emotions and the reflection in the mirror of that that rise above from the bubbling streams, if you will, hiding, you know, they're hiding in our unconscious field, if you will. So the message here is calling us to go on a journey of renewal, just like the moon does every month, so we can really get unstuck, whether from a specific situation or a pattern in life. So for this, we really need to make the time, take the time to be with ourselves without the distractions of modernity, modern society and have the courage to look at the unwanted or the embraced parts of ourself, our beingness, our essence, until we arrive at a place of resolution. 
And even in um, shamanic lore, it's explained that the finest treasures of humanity are really hidden where people are most afraid to go. So I say, be the warrior of the moon, challenge your fears, your moon, wherever that aspect is for your chart. So I always kind of look at the moon myself. Doesn't matter where she's at, the beacon that she is. And then our final message is coming in from the east. This is our possible destiny. It's the way we share our gifts and our treasures, our talents with others. So it's coming from the eagle, which is also card 16, being that we can open up our heart to receive through the heart. And when we do, we have this galactic connection with spirit. But the eagle does come from the east in general, so this is grace. And this is the place of the rising sun, the place of new beginnings. And she soars high in the sky. She sees the minute details with clarity and sight. So without losing track of the galactic big picture, her nests are like galactic as well. They're the highest in the mountaintops. She might have one out in the clouds, who's to say? But with this card, there's no obstacles. There's only opportunities for her. So she's beckoning us to ascend, to acquire a perspective so that we too can fly and be wing to wing with the great spirit. So it's an offering for us to really take the time to see through the eyes of the ego, just allowing vision, our third eye, of the entirety of the whole and also of the parts to become laser straight, focused on our priorities. So like, you know, what did you come to do in this life? Did you come to climb the ladder of financial success or social success? Did you come to become a better person, uh, to heal your heart, to realize your essential self, your essence? You know, it's like, what is your divine mission here on planet Earth, Earth School? It's no more excuses. And of course, you know, sometimes you might have the idea that you don't have enough time, enough money, enough sleep, yet it's the urgency. The time is now to fly with our chosen purpose. And if we postpone it, the only person we're betraying is ourselves, the blessings of betrayal. So really look through the eyes of the eagle and consider, this is kind of what I do, energetic hiccups, every obstacle, see that as an opportunity and where we set our intention, our focus, our beacon, that's where we're gonna end up. So really free yourself, live your highest destiny, simply fly and fly high. Um, get above it, if you will, that's kind of what I do. And on the elemental highway, we have a goat of a day today. It's a yin earth goat of a day, the greatest of all time. So yin earth is born in the rabbit month this time. So this is the peak of the spring season when the element of wood is actually the strongest. So it gets birth, if you will, in the tiger, but now we're at the peak. And it's actually wood frequency, the energy of wood. I'm always talking about energy. I'm not a doctor per se. I'm a medicine girl, um, but it's the strongest in the rabbit month. So this yin earth is actually very well controlled and also it's weakened in a way. It's unable to combine with the tiger energy, the yang wood, to support its growth. So the best case scenario if uh, for this chart for the day, that would have the yang wood, the yang fire. So this is the sun, it's a big tree, and yin water, moisture from the heavens, a nice mist of rain or the ocean cascading, you know, when the mist comes out from the ocean, something like that. But the yin water, the mist of the rain, that's gonna provide the moisture, which is essential for our day, the yin earth, to be able to produce. To prevent the wood from becoming excessive and negative for our day, we do have a lot of wood energy there. And fire is needed to control, to keep it under control, in a way. And it also supports our day. Fire creates ash, right, creates earth. Um, to make it stronger but if the fire gets too strong we need some water which we do have both aspects the yin and the yang of water on the heavenly stems um, so that's going to actually keep it from getting too out of control or too hot so the absence of the yang fire that kind of denotes a lack of satisfaction in life so our yang water is not really useful today particularly because it it can turn our day into mud, literally. This is how the elementals all play out. You know, I look at all these funny things in nature, how they all play. But the yang earth will also weaken the yin earth because it'll be too many rocks in the field, if you will. So our day is in need of fire and metal and also wet earth, like that misted rainwater on the earth. Our day is very dry, even though we have water on the heavenly stems. 
but it's also hot. It's kind of too hot. So water and metal need to be stimulated to bring balance. I would go with metal probably. And the fire is needed to bring balance to the rabbit and the tiger, giving them a job, something to do, the output for the rabbits and the tiger. And metal, we don't have much of. That's also needed along with water or wet earth to reduce the dry earth, which is actually excessive. But again, we have options. And again, we have when the hour of the dragon appears, we're going to have a complete wood direction that is very powerful. We're going to have this for the whole 30 days here. But the energy is going to be even more successful. So be kind of all the things to be. Wood energy is kindness. Um, so be kind. And being that we are in the flow of it, our feelings are really highlighted. It's like how to manage the inner management system inside of us. So metal is strict, it's sharp, it's like a sword sometimes. So be kind to yourself on the inside to the outside and just confirm and reaffirm that you are doing great. There's no need to get bossy or be overly critical of ourselves or feel like we don't have any worth, you know. If you were a manager outside of yourself, how would you like to be managed? And how would you manage yourself on the inside? That's kind of the frequency. So our feelings are really the key to all of the things, in my opinion. My humble one, I will say. So really stay in the flow of your feelings. There's no need to go down the rabbit hole. When we got the rabbit, so we can go down a hole. Um, so really have a feeling. Have Just have a feeling to heart conversation. Connecting with our feelings really brings us to balance to our outer realms. Um, they're kind of the summary. It's kind of the last chapter of our entire essence. The being that resides within us and they allow us to kind of read the fields outside of us just by being in touch with, with our feelings. And feelings come in a variety of ways. You know, sometimes you get the chills. Sometimes you get the bad vibe, the good vibe, the weird, the grief, which most people think is the ugly, which is strange. Um, but stuff like that. So it's our body trying to communicate that something is coming up from our bubbling spring. Uh, something is off. So just being that we are in the season of Pisces, the spiritual essence of who we are, we might be in the system to navigate a new direction, a new pathway of spirituality. It's a change in our day-to-day, -day, a new habit, a new ritual. It's transformation of the old ritual and just kind of being aware of patterns that are shifting and changing and transforming, just moving to a new position, this rootedness of the pattern, the spiritual root, you know, what is the cycle? What is the pattern? Is it time to plant a new seed? So it's like our outer realm is a reflection of our inner realm. So pay attention to your feelings today and really utilize them as the barometer of what you feels, the feels, F-E-E-L-S, not the F-I-L-L-S. So we all have a default system, the one we always fall back into, our prior story, our prior narrative, where we feel safe, right? So going into the streams of our feelings, go there and go deeper into the conscious river streams, if you will, and connect with your inner streams, the ones that you're familiar with. Um, it's time to kind of shift gears, if you will, and commit to really stopping an energy that often frequents your day-to-day -day life. Uh, shifting the frequential frequency, the reality of the life that we're in. We're like treading waters. So what we see on the outer realms is the reflection of our inner realms. So it's an issue that really no longer resonates with an emotion that doesn't stream, that doesn't grow. It's like it's dammed up. So our outer world is cycling that through and connecting to an inner world feeling. There's all these streams everywhere, right? So the ones that no longer serve us, our higher self, our Sira, what we look like in the other dimension. So as we sit in our observation station, being a space of reflection, mirrored reflection, it's, so it's time to take the initiative to bring a new path forward, one that replaces the old spiritual path. It's like we are on this exit ramp or there's an aspect for something to exit off the ramp as we continue down our pathway, our highway on the earth school plane or in the others, it doesn't really matter, but it's the heart field that it's gonna resonate with. So really check your intuition for guidance and warning signals and sigils and symptoms, I guess I wanna say, and just make sure that your heart believes. So anything that your heart does not believe 
is not going to last long. You don't have the frequency in there. So being that we're in this new spiritual acumen, it can be something simple that you add to your daily ritual to connect with your ancestors, the divine source energy, even the you that is you in the other highway, the other dimension, right? What you might be doing in another timeline, really. <laughs> so be optimistic, be a force of change, transform like a snake or a butterfly coming out of a new cocoon. The old, it is no longer fitting. It's time to be the shiny new light. And being that our third eye is online, along with our crown, and all this elemental realms of fire and wet earth and metal, we've got options. So fire, you know, plant a seed in the earth, water the seed, use ash from the fire to bring in the minerals, the elemental realm, just seeing things with new eyes, the origin, the sigils, the symbols. I mean, emojis are symbols, right? It's a language of the old, the origin. Kind of, in a way, if you were to look at it with a new shape, a new form. We can ohm today, or we can ong today. We can be in the sound of silence today. We can also go through all the elemental sounds of fire, earth, and metal, or just fire and metal. But muse as to what feels the best for you. Don't always just do what I do, right? It's okay to be different. Kind of adds variety, adds some spice to life. But I would say, listen to your inner heart chambers, you know, what is the ultimate elevated message for you between the heart and the soul? And feel the threads of fate and faith in yourself or fate, actually, now that I said that out loud. Fate or faith. <laughs> and um, from the inside to the outer realms. So I would affirm that I am devoted to my spiritual growth, ascending out of those old rituals, those old pathways, and just opening your heart to new self-love as you pour more into your day-to-day -day chalice and that's kind of a long affirmation you know you could just pour love into your spiritual chalice but whatever that might be for you so with that inshallah and ashe blessings to you and as always i will see you on the other side